<laughs> anyway, so we're going to work on fan coral tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get overhead and we will get started. There we go. Okay. So, all right. So what I want to share with you tonight is I want to first get a little pencil sketch in here. Just in, I wouldn't normally sketch this, but I just want you to kind of see. It really resembles a tree. So if you think of it as having kind of a center trunk right here, and it, it, it grows attached to rocks and other coral that sit on the ocean floor, okay? And then from that trunk, it branches out, right? And so we're going to come through here, and we're going to have a branch that comes out there. And this branch is going to go way up here. And then we're going to come with this main trunk here. It's going to come right up and go about right there. And then you're going to have um, branches coming off here, here. And I've seen lots of different types of fan coral when I was doing my research for what I wanted to do with this. So you might see them in different colors. My, my original sample, this is what it's going to look like when we're all done. My original sample was one that was very brightly lit neon orange. Okay. And so this is what I'm going to show you how to create. Um, the one that I'm looking at right now is a bright pink. And so I'm going to be using that pink because I thought that was pretty too. Okay, so I'm going to go through a stage here of showing you how to get this kind of background on here. And then um, from there, I'll show you how to start doing all the little fingers that come out. Okay, but essentially this is, it's very light, um, but this is what it looks like. Okay, so let's put out some colors here that we can work with. I am going to put out some pink melon. And this is going to be for our background. Now, if you ever go look at any pictures of these, um, what I noticed is within the tree structure, then with all the little fingers, um, you have, the, there's kind of um, a, a coloration that really makes this look full. Okay. And so I, th what, what I did with this and I'm going to do with the pink melon is I'm pulling this um, background color out and leaving a few holes. And if you don't remember to leave the holes, I came back in and put the white back in when I was on white paper. Now under C, we're going to, we would do it with blue or dark blue or whatever the background color would be. Okay. So I'm going to put out some bright pink. That's going to be our foreground color. So this is pink melon and that's bright pink. And then we're going to do a little shading with a little darker color. So this is a little bit of June berry. Okay. And then our highlighting, we're going to add just a touch of white. Okay. So don't need a lot of any of those colors, but this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to come in with my mop brush. I'm, I'm not going to get this wet. I'm going to use medium with this. Okay. So I'm going to come and load it with a bunch of floating medium quite a bit of it, kind of fill it up here. And then I'm going to come over here and get some pink melon. So I'm thinning this pink melon with this brush. Okay. More medium. I want a nice thin pink. So this is going to create that kind of webbing background color that, um, you're going to see as we create, as we build this out. So the fan shape is what I'm going to create now. So I'm going to come in here with just the tip of my brush and we're going to pull this out and sweep it from the center stem or the center trunk here out, creating that edge of that fan. Okay. Or the shape of the fan. All right. Picking up more of that color. So coming out from the center trunk and we're going to create a nice oval shape going from down here and we want to bring this down a little bit so sweep this down that got a little thick so we put a little medium in there there we go okay all right and then on this side and then come out. Okay. 
Yep, you just got your mops. Don't let them sit. Pick them up. Start playing with them. You're going to love all the different things you can do with these things, with these brushes. Okay, so see how I'm brushing this in a flow. It's not just straight. I'm making curves and creating that shape. Okay, so the flow of this background color back and forth. Okay, so we've got some light and dark values in this background color. And we'll finish up right up here. Now, one of the things that we tend to want to do with our brushes is push. And on these, I try to stay up on the tips more so that I get this wispy look. So it's like a broom. Okay. So if you work with it, work delicate, see what you like with the strokes. If you want to get watercolory look, then you use water with it instead of medium. Um, that will create the puddles of water and give you different um, shades and things when it dries. Okay, so I'm done with this brush and I'm gonna just go ahead and clean it and you just stroke it um, one way across the bottom of your brush basin with pressure to get the paint out of it. And it comes out very nicely, very quickly and see that it's nice and clean and ready for next time, okay? All right, so now I'm going to grab a flat brush, get that damp. This is an eight flat, and this is where I'm going to come in and get my neon color. All right. So I'm going to load this eight flat with, this is bright pink or pink neon. Either one of those will work. Um, they're not a whole lot different between the two. And then I'm going to come over here and just side load a little bit of white on one edge. Okay. So I mostly want that bright pink. All right, so what I'm going to do now is we're just going to stroke on the chisel edge and it doesn't really matter which direction you go. So I'm actually going to come this way so you can see a little better. If I go up, my hand gets in the way, right? So picking up that bright pink and side stroking a little white and we're creating that central trunk. All right, so let's come down here a little closer now that you can see the detail, okay? So I'm going to move this over here and I'll put my palette over there. Okay, so now we're going to come on the chisel and you're going to use moderate pressure. This is a flat brush so you can push and lift. They have varying widths, right? These are living animals under the sea. So they, they kind of grow with the um, nutrients that are available. And when they don't receive nutrition much, then it stunts their growth a little bit. So you have kind of bulges and skinny parts. So little pushes here and there going out to the point. Okay. Do I ever use a brush cleaning soap on the mop brushes or use water? You can use brush soap just like we use on our one stroke brushes, no problem. So we like um, Plaid's Brush Plus. I've used pink soap. Both of those work well. Okay. So, a little bit stronger with this. There we go. So you see we've got some highlights in there and we've got a little bit of um, dark shadowing. We're going to do some more shading in just a minute as soon as I get my, my branches on here. So remember when you're adding branches to anything, tree or otherwise, you start on the main trunk and then you go away. So it would have been better if I didn't do this in pencil, but that wouldn't have shown you very well how to do this. So, all right, so main trunk and then branch away. So you don't have hard perpendicular left turns or right turns, okay? All right. 
right. So now coming up, we'll finish this trunk. So I encourage you to go out on Pinterest or uh, Google or whatever your favorite browser engine is and um, look up fan coral. They're beautiful and they're, if they're not endangered, I think they should be, but with their coral reefs diminishing, they're hard to find. I've only seen one once when I was snorkeling underwater. Where else would you snorkel, right? Okay, so there we have our main kind of trunk, if you will. I want down here to be just a little bit stronger width-wise. There. Okay, so it's, it's kind of a pink um, with white highlights. Okay, so at this point then, I'm going to come in here and do a little roughing up or texture by tapping because it's very kind of gnarly down here where it attaches to the rocks. And then it has kind of a root base. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and show you how we do, I'm going to let that dry, and while I'm doing that, I'll show you how we do all the different little veining or fingers throughout this, okay? So script liner, you're going to get that wet, you're going to come in and get the pink, bright pink, pink neon, whatever you like, all right? And we're going to vary between the bright pink, the pink melon, and some June berry. So what happens with these is it's not like branches at this point between each of the segments or sections. They're interconnected. All right. So you might come off and go back and wait back out and back. And then they come out to a little finger at the top. But the finger at the top is rounded. So you want to touch here and then pull back. So it has a rounded end on it. All right. And then you're going to just proceed to kind of interweave and you can go over to this side and connect off of there. It'll take round turns. Okay, and so you can get very creative very quickly creating this kind of patterned network through here. But ultimately, you need to have a whole bunch of them that come up to these fingers at the top, and then you pull this back. Okay, now I'm going to come and get, let me get a little bit more water, and I'm going to come get some June berry mixed with my brush. All right, and we're going to create some darker ones here. And what you want to do is try to get it so that you can't really tell the path. All right, you don't want to be able to trace, oh, that's where that one went. All right, um, so you vary what you pick up. I'm going to get a little bit of white now and we'll create one with a little bit of highlight and that will come right through there. So you can see that this can get to be kind of fun, but it, it can also get to be a little tedious. Okay. And that's why I'm not going to sit here all night <laughs> and show you how to get all of these different little loop-de-loos in here. Okay. Do you kind of get the idea at this point? So ultimately you want to get up here to this top and have, you can have multiple fingers coming out and then pull back with the tip of your brush, touch and lift, lift and lift. So you get little fingers out there. Okay. So I'm going to Finish this one out. Ooh, that's really dark. Okay. 
get some lighter pink in here and if you go a little too dark you can come right over it with the lighter pink okay and you can come back around it's kind of like a maze you can grab a little white and this pink and every finger that comes out here, you touch and pull back, okay? So hopefully you'll go find some pictures of fan coral and you'll see what I'm talking about with this. It gets very dense in here and when it's this big especially it's going to take some time to fill this all in. So right now I'm just kind of looking for big wide open spaces and going through them. Okay so Right, so you get the gist, I think. I'm creating this little network of segments in this space. Okay. Now, once you get all done, right, then you see something that looks like this, where in this one I did with the orange neon, okay? And so you can see I've got dark in here. This was Pueblo and I had orange neon and I had little bits of um, daffodil yellow that I blended in there to kind of bring out some highlighting. And the shading was all done with the Pueblo. Okay. In this case with this pink, what you want to do, I'm going to grab a bigger flat. Let's get a 12 flat and let's come out just a little more. So you can kind of see where we're going with this and how we get out into these areas. So I'm going to, I've got a 12 flat. I'm going to get this loaded with medium and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to side load just a little bit of this Juneberry. Now that's going to be really dark. So I want to get a touch of the pink melon to work in with it. Okay. Kind of lighten it back up. And so within this space and around the, the, um, trunk. So if the highlighting that I did was on the right hand side, you're going to come in here and you're going to float shading right on the left side, which would be the opposite side of the highlighting and underneath these branches. Okay. And that's the only thing that you would shade in this because it's the only thing with any kind of girth, all right? The shading, shading that you really created on the rest of it is coming from the darker um, strokes that you put inside and in between the um, branches, okay? So you can see here, and you go between the branches, you don't go over them. So you stop there and then you can pick it up down here Okay, so that's what you would do. You could use magenta too, and that's a, that's a bit stronger. But once you get this all done, I think you'll be happy with um, how it looks. It just takes a little time. Now, when I do the design that I'm going to do for March, we will have a fan coral in there. It'll be smaller, I promise. <laughs> in the grand scheme of, of whatever that landscape looks like, okay? And then once you get through all this shading, remember you shade on the flat of the brush, then you can come in and maybe do a little bit of shading in between some of the branches. You can get a little bit of dark here 
and come in here, here, All right, and that'll create a little bit of depth between the branches. Then I recommend you can come in with a little white highlight, right? So side load, you get medium and then side load some white with your dirty brush, okay? Because you don't want stark white. And then you can come along and highlight the right side of this or down the middle, whichever you prefer. Okay? So that is the process for creating, successfully creating a um, fan coral. And I hope you enjoyed that video, that demonstration. And one, like I said, oops, I'm sorry. And once you get all done, right, you're going to have something that looks like this. Okay. So there you go, fan coral.